instead of because we've seen some fairly advanced topics and things um, tonight. Actually, I should just mirror my screen because otherwise I won't be able to see what I'm doing. But not everyone has been doing this forever. So um, each time we have a meetup, we'll basically cover some basic element of CSS, or in this case, SAS. My screen's now going crazy. Ah. Ah. So I'm just going to do an intro to SAS, basically. Go. Um, as you can see from the text, SAS does rock. Um, Less and SAS are kind of competing with each other a bit. SAS, I think, is winning, maybe. Go SAS. Um, I should actually tell myself it's going to be crazy. Um, then there are other things like there's post CSS, which, which lets you do all sorts of crazy things, which is kind of the same, but not quite. But SAS is fairly well documented. So if you're curious about diving into something other than basic CSS, um, SAS is probably the way to go at the moment. I'll just explain a couple of the features. This is meant to be five minutes long, but I haven't timed it or prepped it properly, so who knows. Um, just to give you an idea of how it works. So I've got a really basic HTML structure here. Um, it really doesn't do all that much. I've got a header, a couple of subheaders, <coughs> a section, paragraph, list, nothing really major. Using boring old CSS, so variables actually, let's go through this in order. Um, I've got my paragraph and my list item colored right here. Now, ordinarily if I need to change the color because the designer said, hey, red's probably not so great as a text color, then I'd have to go through and change each one like that. And this is easy because I've got two, but imagine you've got a massive um, CSS file you have to go through each and every one. So if I have variables, I can just grab the variable and drop that in there instead. So now if I want to change the primary color, I can just go and edit my one spot in the SAS and I'm done. That basically sells SAS on its own for me. Um, CSS variables are coming in as a standard, but to adopt them uh, until they've got 100% adoption, it's basically impossible to put them into your projects, which makes it really difficult. But yeah, this alone is really good. The other thing that you get by naming things is it's easy to understand what's going on. Um, so here I've got primary, secondary, tertiary color according to what they actually mean. When you're going into your code, it's like, well, I need this thing to have whatever color you can just refer to the name. It makes it a whole lot easier to understand what's going on. Obviously here I've just got colors as on the variables, but you might put your media query breakpoints, um, font stacks, anything else that might be relevant to you. Um, yeah, if you're putting it in there more than once, then it should be a variable basically. Nesting, nesting is really awesome. I'm going to color my section, except I've broken my code now. And here, I've got my section, I've got different things inside. So, this is how you'd normally write it in CSS. When you go SAS, everything is nicer. So you can just, well, I already know I'm in section. And save a lot of trouble like this. So this is basically the equivalent. Um, you've got to be really careful with nesting, regardless of which programming language you're using. Um, if you contribute to the Linux core and you use more than three, ne uh, three levels of nesting, then the nest Thorvalds will probably come and shoot you or something. <laughs> Not that I'm suggesting he's prone to violence. Probably quite the opposite. I don't know the man. Um, but yeah, nesting is something to be careful of. If you're using namespacing along the lines of Ben then you're probably not going to nest all that much anyway. Um, but when you do, this is pretty handy. Just be careful about how you use it. 
Partials. Partials, according to the SAS spec, are one of the most important part Actually, no, wrong thing. Partials. It's basically an import like this. Um, with the uh, projects that I'm working on right now in my work, we have a global um, font size is a bit. We've got a global uh, style resource basically, and everything's split up. So within an individual project, you can like, override it and any one of these particular things. Using imports, it all basically gets thrown into the one. No, I can't find the code for it. Uh, yeah. Too, ah, too much. <laughs> too many tabs. I'm just going to show it in GitHub because that's easier. <laughs> so you can see how I've just basically imported all these different modules. And within an individual project, if I want all of them, that's great. If I don't, say for example, I don't have any tabs, I can just comment out this bit here and I'm done. So that's pretty good. It, but, and it, instead of having to combine your CSS files or anything else like that, it does it for you. Imports, same thing, basically. Um, does it make that much difference? Mix-ins. Mix-ins are basically variables of functions. You've got to be careful about using them, but it's just like anything else. When you're repeating your code, then usually you want to actually abstract it in some way. Um, in this case, all you basically need to do, if you need to do a clear fix on something, is call this, and that code gets injected into the um, element that you're in. And that's fantastic. You don't have to then refer to how to do that. Um, Actually, I've broken my code by doing an import into nothing. So mix-ins are a really easy way of doing variables. Extend extensions and inheritance. Apparently, this is one of the best parts of SAS. I've never used them, and I've tried to avoid them. Um, so good luck. Uh, the last one is operators. Operators basically let you do basic maths. Um, so you can let's say you've got fixed um, width of 900 and you need somewhere that needs to be 900 divided by 2 or something like that. You could just calculate that yourself, but by putting the calculations in the SAS, it makes it really clear the logic behind what you're doing. Um, I don't really use them very often, because it doesn't really seem to come up, but maybe I'm just really bad at it, I'm not too sure. But that's the basics of SAS. So if you're not using it, you no longer have any excuse to try, uh, not to try. Um, you can go to saslang.com and they cover all the basics and everything else in there. So have a go. We're kind of short on time because okay. we're minus the speaker. We have a little bit more time, so I'm just going to chop in a talk. I don't have any slides because um, I wasn't planning on speaking, but it's fine. So I'm just going to talk briefly about <coughs> performance when it comes to CSS animation.